Hey guys, money is one of those ideas that make perfect sense if you just never think about it. We trade pieces of paper, or technically cotton, which has no intrinsic value for goods and services that have intrinsic value. It would make more sense, intuitively at least, to barter or trade something of value for something else of value. Yet today, there are no modern economies that run on a system of barter. But when I was in high school, I was taught that pre-colonial Native Americans had barter economies. This idea was written about by Adam Smith, otherwise known as the father of economics. He wrote a really popular book called The Wealth of Nations. Adam Smith's ideas on Native American barter systems went on to influence quite a few American textbooks. A more popular one said, and I quote, The American Indian with a pony to dispose of had to wait until he met another Indian who wanted a pony and at the same time was able and willing to give for it a blanket or other commodity that he himself desired. Thousands of years before Adam Smith was writing about Native American barter systems, Aristotle, a guy who today is mostly remembered for having ideas and being wrong about them, was writing about barter systems between barbarian tribes. As was pointed out by the late anthropologist David Graeber and by the journalist Jacob Goldstein, there is no evidence of this. There were some examples of people bartering, but as far as we can tell, it only really happened without groups. By this, I mean that your tribe might trade with another neighbor tribe, but most of your interactions would have been in group, so you can hardly call that an economy. This idea is now referred to as the myth of barter because economists no longer believe in it. In fact, we're not even sure what Adam Smith and Aristotle were talking about. When you think about it, barter would have been incredibly inconvenient. It depends on you wanting something that someone else has and that other person wanting something that you have and them being of roughly the same value. This is referred to as the coincidence of wants. And it's oftentimes pitched that money was devised as a way to solve this problem. Barter is basically a worse version of the current monetary system, and I think one of the reasons why the story that money evolved from that is so common is because it's easy to look at people from the past and assume that they were just like us, but dumber. But they weren't dumber, they just had less time. They also would have existed in environments that needed different tools. Whether you're looking at small groups of hunter-gatherers or you're looking at large societies like the Incas who built an entire empire without ever using money, you don't find barter. What they did have was credit, or a kind of credit system. People were running their economy not based on barter, but based on reciprocity. If you specialized in something like blacksmithing, then instead of trading with someone who specialized in something like raising cattle, you would simply do favors for one another. People who gave the most generally got the most in return, and people who were stingy or took without giving back were socially ostracized. And in prehistoric times, or even just a couple hundred years ago, being socially ostracized could mean death. Pushing on with this idea of credit, in medieval England, they would use a type of tally stick. Each notch that was carved into the stick worked as a form of credit that could later be traded in for gold or things of intrinsic value. Although this system sounds kind of ancient, it was in use until the 1800s. These tally sticks were thought to be the precursor to government-issued bonds. But what actually is money? It's fair to say that most money today is numbers on a screen. 90% of money is digital, but what about that other 10%? And then what about all of the other things that we've used over time as money? It's often said that metal was universally used as a form of money. This isn't quite true. One of the things that I find most interesting is that human beings have been able to use metal since at least 7,000 years ago, during the Bronze Age. However, we have only really been using metal as a form of money since 2,000 years ago, particularly in Babylonia. In between that time, and for a long time after it, we have used a lot of stuff as money. Things like cows, alcohol, knives, cowrie shells, and maybe my favorite, two-ton limestones found at the bottom of the ocean. So the question then becomes, what do all of these things have in common? It can't simply be that they're valuable because while some of them are valuable, like cows which can be eaten or milked, most of them aren't. Cowrie shells don't really do anything and two-ton limestones found at the bottom of the ocean today really didn't do anything either. The barter system that some say money evolved from would not have worked on intersubjective values. 
it's not you agreeing to some abstract idea that this thing is valuable. Instead, it's just you trading one valuable thing for another valuable thing. Makes sense in the short term, but I think everyone would have figured out that this was highly inefficient, which is why we don't find evidence of it. Money, like most other inventions, ends up being not an idea that was invented by a particular person or even a particular place. We can trace coins back to China, but that same idea took off independently in Lydia. And people in places who would have never interacted with either China or Lydia came up with their own monetary systems that better suited their environments. You can't even really say when money was invented because we just keep on reinventing it. Like when Marco Polo seen Kublai Khan's paper money and suddenly most of Europe was using paper money. That money then served as a representation of the precious metal that we had been using for thousands of years but when that became inconvenient, we switched it to be its own thing. And with the inconveniences of the current system, people teeter away at creating the next thing. And they probably always will. And thanks for watching.